All right, guys, welcome back to another one take. Today, we're taking a look at the Harugamo. This is honestly a ship I don't play all that often because I'm usually using it to grind research bro points, right? This line is the absolute cheapest when it comes to XP grinding. So we're getting our research points for the cheapest free XP possible. I tend to reset when there's a double reset, happens once every few months or so. And yeah, it's a pretty good way to grind out research points, but the ship itself is quite good, honestly. I think that the only issue is really the maneuverability. It's big, it's clumsy, it's slow. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't handle very well at all. So you gotta be a little bit careful of that. Of course, the carrier is a little spooky. <laughs> Since we're so big and easy to hit, those rocket planes could definitely do some damage. And we don't have the best plane conceal, as you can see. The AA, I mean, it's a surface ship. It doesn't have good AA, right? So we do have to try and be as stealthy as possible. With this build, I do have 6.2 kilometer concealment. We'll go over that after this game. But the way I tend to approach matches in a Harugamo is I'm not trying to full send it in and take a bunch of DD fights at least if there's some really good gunboats or a bunch of radars, that kind of thing. But you notice the Riga, of course, is over here on the B cap. There could be an Alaska here. Oh, I did not want to get plane spotted. I thought it was going to leave already. All right, so there is an Alaska here. <laughs> Let's just hope that he doesn't get close enough to radar. Well, 10 kilometers. Yeah, he's radaring and charging. Feels good. Um, so the thing to be aware of, I suppose, is I've overcommitted here. I got myself stuck in a pretty bad spot. I would have been fine had that uh, plane disappeared just a little sooner. But now we know that the Alaska has used his radar, so we're gonna smoke up in the cap. Could be a little dangerous. Wow, he's got some insane blind fire. But he's used his radar, so we're feeling pretty good. And we can smoke up and just farm him, because Harugamo absolutely shreds people. This ship's kind of thing is that it's got really, really good DPM. And good pen. I'm gonna send the other set of torps through here. And that's the thing with radar cruisers. To deal with them, you really just want to make sure you know when they have radar up and when they don't. The reason I sent the other set of torps further back is simply due to the other battleships coming through that way. I'm broadside to torps through here, so I could just get absolutely smoked by torps. But we get the cap, which feels good. Note we're in Riga radar range now. Uh, <laughs> it's a little tough. It's a little tough. But we do make it out. And it looks like this Alaska is going to ground. So what we want to do is we really want to try and finish him off. So the special thing, of course, is on top of... Uh, ooh, I really don't want to get plane spotted here. Um, the special thing, of course, is it pens 30 millimeters on these main guns. 30 millimeters is really, 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 really good. All right, unfortunately, the midway is going to come after us, so we're going to lose a lot of HP here. Keep in mind, the planes we're shooting down are not his actual attack planes. We're just shooting down the fighters. So the numbers on screen might make you feel kind of good, but trust me, they don't matter. They really don't matter. Ah, I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have turned off my A. There really isn't much point. It's, it's rough playing a DD against carriers, man. They're pretty overpowered. They're, well, unless you get extremely lucky, gonna absolutely end you. And then the Alaska, who's been kind of after me all game, goes, oh, hi, PQ. 
Very convincing. Very convincing. Gotta say. <laughs> uh, see, and that's the other thing is I'm gonna get a little more focus fire than other people, and that's a little bit unfortunate. But what we have done this game so far is we've kind of denied the enemy team a lot of ability to uh, to deal with this flank, honestly. Oh, why do I have my AA on? It's really dumb. I have to smoke here, or at least try to. Uh, okay, looks like he's not going for me. Yeah, so games like this are just unfortunate, right? You're not really going to have a good time against carriers. You're not going to have a good time against radar cruisers who are going to just go after you all the time. And that's okay, because Harugamo has an insane gun range of like 15 kilometers with this build. And while the arcs aren't amazing, as we can see, if you're good with this ship and you can lead properly, it's pretty good. It can work. I'm trying to be mindful that the uh, Shima could be spotted soon, depending on how the submarine goes. And yeah, we're winning the other side. Like, that's the thing. This is the enemy's kind of, sort of strong flank. So we don't really have to worry about pushing. We just got to worry about containing the enemy team. So what we're going to do is just farm a Zetan. So yeah, I think that this ship can be extremely, extremely good. It's not my favorite destroyer to play, mainly because it's just so clumsy. But it can work, and especially against cruisers now, it's actually extremely powerful, since it does pen 30 millimeters. And it's one thing that a lot of those um, cruisers don't expect, right? They don't expect you to be able to just pen them, <laughs> right? And that can be pretty fun. Although, again, you do have to be a little bit careful. But we're on red HP, like we're low health, and yet we still have 8,000 HP left. Which is pretty good. It's pretty good. And we've done a decent job of stalling this flank, I would say. Let's not eat a torp like an idiot, and just hold on. Yeah, not much damage in this one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But it's a one take, right? This is, uh, this is a realistic look at ships, right? I just click battle and we get what we get. Maybe this is better. Uh, talking about how to play passive, trying to stay alive in carrier games. Notice I'm kind of at the center of this entire formation, trying to keep myself alive with AA support. It's tough. Although he's definitely going for Yami, so I can open up to try and help. Right, I, I'm going to be spotted anyway by these torpedo planes, so I may as well open up on my AA to try and help a little bit. Alright, so the Alaska's here somewhere. We saw the sh shots coming through, so we're mindful of that. Now, I would open up here a lot of the time. I, w I really would. But I know this Iowa and this Z10 are very, very keen to shoot me as well. So normally, I'd be totally fine with just sending it with uh, some open water firing. But yeah, it's a little bit spooky. Although we see the Alaska's far enough away that I should... Uh... Oh, Shima's behind us. I should be able to get away with smoking up and then taking the cap and the Alaska should be able to get into radar range. We could farm the Iowa a little bit. Against battleships, of course, we do want to shoot superstructures and that's why I'm, oh, I'm gonna back out of the cap. That's a bad play. We do want to be lighting fires. Unfortunately, we're not lighting any fires yet. <laughs> we had a hundred hits with no fires and I'm not having IFHE. And the reason I don't have IFHE on this build is that 30 millimeters of pen. I do find that, I, do, I really do find that against battleships, it's really, really, really easy to just, to just hit superstructures. That's it. That's all there is to it, really. So 
I'm not really interested in the extra 32 mils of pen. I'd rather get myself a uh, extra fire chance, that kind of thing. Oh, what torps are these? Probably the Z10 torps, I suppose. Now, let's see if the Shima is going to open up on us. Although, he's not spotting us, so he has to be behind this rock. So you can do this a lot. I do this a lot in gunboat DDs, is I get my aim on target, and then I use right click to give me free look while still being locked on. And this gives you a lot more situational awareness. So I'm just kind of waiting for the Shima to pop up. Yeah, you can see the Z10 is very interested in shooting me. <laughs> that's uh, unfortunate. We got... That's unfortunate. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> oh, unlucky this game. Unlucky. Alright, he's down. Now, it's really just the Shima, the Alaska, and I guess the sub. But 52 seconds, this game's gonna be over. We can see the torps coming over here from the Shima. So we know where about where he is. I'm not gonna try and get in Alaska range. There's no need to get fancy. And we win with 50k damage. <laughs> Pretty pathetic. But we stayed alive amongst all that focus. You know, Carrier came after us a few times. We positioned ourselves after. We lost a lot of HP to stay alive even in a Carrier game. It's important to do. Uh, not to just go out on your own. You can do a little bit of solo play against carriers in a destroyer if you got HP. But as soon as you lose your HP, play with your team, be supportive, focus fire, set smokes, go after caps like I did when, when your team pushes up and that AA bubble extends far enough, go after the cap again, that kind of thing. But no need to play hero once you've lost all your HP. And 50k damage, and we're top score even, somehow. 21 plane kilts, a lot of those were fighter planes, I'm sure, so not the, yeah, <laughs> not the most impressive, but again, I'm turning my AA on when I can help my teammates. There's no point in leaving my AA off when the carrier's striking my teammates and they would be spotting me anyway, right? 3.6 kilometer bubble of uh, air detect and, you know, we may as well turn our AA on to try and help out a little bit. But do be mindful to turn it off. Uh, what was our air detect again exactly? Sorry, it's 3.4. So if you're really close to your teammates, carriers striking them, may as well turn your AA on. As for the build, I only have a 19 point commander here, so I'm not able to quite get main battery and AA specialist. This would help out when we're trying to farm damage and of course a little bit with the AA. That's probably what I would go for once I have 20 points. I do think that this main batter and AA specialist is better than Fearless Brawler for Harukamo. This ship is big, clumsy, and slow. So it really doesn't lend itself to open water fights where you're spotted. It wants to farm from smokes, from behind islands. You have so much range with this build, right? 15 kilometers of range. We're taking main batter and AA expert. This gives us that extra range that we want. And notice I'm not even taking superintendent because that range allows us to play like a light cruiser from behind a lot of islands. Feels a little bit like a mini Colbert kind of feel where, uh, where you can play from behind those islands and do reasonably well. But this is, of course, focused on farming damage in random battles. If you're trying to play ranked or more competitive stuff, or you're just trying to play a little closer range, don't take the range. Take extra, extra damage output would be really good as well. You don't need 15 kilometers of range to make this ship work. I just enjoy this build as a kind of light cruiser feeling destroyer. It's it's pretty good, um, assuming that you're not getting focused a lot. <laughs> uh, we're taking prop mod and we're still feeling pretty sluggish as you noticed. So sitting in smoke screens with a big long ship like this, you're a torpedo magnet, right? So we do want to try and dodge as much as possible. Taking reload, so there's potential for like a 17 kilometer Harugamo. That's a little bit too difficult to hit shots at that range, but it's uh, it's pretty fun. I have tried it every once in a while. The shells come down from space. They're, they're very, very difficult to hit. So 15 seems like a good middle ground for me where I can farm those bow-in battleships pretty well, 
And I'm still good at close range too. I'm not giving up all my DPM just to try and get that little bit of extra range. All right, second game, what do we get? We get super ships, no carrier, and we get arms race, islands of ice. So to talk a little bit about islands of ice, or arms race, sorry. Some of you wondered what my opinion on arms race is, and I don't like it, guys. I might make a full video, but I really, really, really dislike arms race. To me, it feels like epicenter, but you're giving the winning team buff chips. That's what it feels like to me, because the game is always decided at the end by a central capture zone, exactly like arms race, except during the initial phases, the team that gains the upper hand, right, has better players, able to play more aggressive, gains more buffs, well, they are gonna have better quality ships, they're gonna have more ships for that late game. And it's tough, man. There's it's it's the opposite of a comeback mechanic, right? It's it's a win harder kind of mechanic, is how I view uh, arms race in its current iteration. I, I think it's really, really, really bad. It's it's yeah, I, I just feel like there's just so many more steamrolls in Arms Race than there are in other game modes. And that was one of the things I disliked about Epicenter is it felt like once the enemy team or once your team or the enemy team had some, even a little bit of control over the caps in the middle area, it was just GG. Game over. Because pushing into it was way too hard and each zone was completely separate. So in old Epicenter, which I kind of liked, you could stall out every ring from the middle ring which was cool because then you could really stick it in there send it in and try and win some games for your team but then they changed it so that you couldn't stall the outer rings from the middle ring and then it was much harder to win games and come back and have a huge huge comeback and that's what i disliked about old epicenter so i was happy they they got rid of it but this new iteration feels like the exact same epicenter I've been playing in the late game, except you're giving buffs to whichever team is winning. So not a fan, not not a big fan of that. Here we're gonna have to be extremely careful because Sherman daring, like very, very scary stuff. Shimakaze though, I can say hi. We're hitting his nose where he's saturated. That's why we're doing such little damage. All right, we got him. Good. So that's the thing. We really, really, really want to support these cap zones. It's it's so tough because I really want to push, but I think the better option here is to save our HP a little bit and try and farm out their team as they're trying to be hyper aggressive. Okay, we got an insta fire. Definitely doing a little better this game. So keep in mind, guys, this is Epicenter. So we are going to get some pretty insane damage numbers if we play it smart. So something to note, the Balao shouldn't be able to cap from up from under the surface. So we should be able to just kind of send it into him. Assuming that we're not going to get rocked by a DD here or something like that. Alright. Let's try and take the sub out. The Balao does have stern torps, so we got to be a little careful of that. Good. He's gone. Freddy's gonna run. We won't be able to get torps on him because we only have 12 kilometers of range. But, like I mentioned, guys, if I have HP, I'll farm. I'll do some open water farming, sure. We got a nice HP buff, right? So we're at 32 HP, 32,000 HP. That is one of the nice things about this ship. It's got a lot of HP for a destroyer. Okay, somebody else got the fire. 
I should go after this uh, ship HP buff, because whatever team gets the buffs is just... I mean, you're already winning contested priority zones, right? You're already just going to win games based on winning priority areas, like we're doing right here, you know? So... Satsuma used his accuracy buff to hit me? Okay, I guess so. And it's gonna go down here soon. Um, but we're gonna get our normal healing back, right? So this ship normally wouldn't have a heal. In this, in this game mode, it does. <laughs> and it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It's already up to 63, 64k damage. L look, look, guys, it's exactly... It's exactly what I said. It's exactly what I said. The winning team gets more buffs. They have more ships on the table. They gain more buffs. And then by the time the key area middle epicenter zone appears, you have more ships that have been buffed to be better ships. Uh, it, it's just not a good game mode because it leads to more steamrolls. Just too many steamrolls. Like, our team hasn't lost a ship. We got healing buffs. We're not going to lose ships. Our Schlieffen is our lowest HP ship. And that thing can just go dark. It's not under any pressure. You can see it in the bottom right corner in G10. It, this is going to be... I, I would be shocked if we lose a ship here. Honestly, guys. I would be really, really shocked. It's sad. It's sad. Because I don't want blowout wins. I don't want blowout losses. I want close games. That's what I like in this game. I like surface ship combat leading to close games. You can see my aim kind of sucks on this this ship. I haven't played it in a long time. They are only 100 millimeter guns and they can be a little bit rough to lead at longer ranges. All right, let's push across, gain even more buffs. <laughs> like, holy crap. All right, Marceau is going to be hard to hit at range, for sure. Normally, I wouldn't want to take this fight, but he's focused on our Holland. And our Holland asked for support, so we may as well give it to him. HE, of course, against a French destroyer is not going to do the most damage, but it'll, it'll add up. It'll add up. The AP is really, really, really good on this thing as well. It's just that I'm not... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, because it doesn't have improved pen angles or anything like that. And the HE is just going to full pen- Oh! oh, 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 oh. Dev struck off the screen. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Yeah, like- Oh, we lost someone! We lost a Des Moines! Where? Oh, he turned flat broadside. He's right here. He turned flat broadside. Alright, fair enough. Just wanted to help the team out, I suppose. Or the enemy team out. Alright, we'll gain our next heal buff, or HP buff, I should say. I, I suppose at least they are going to limit us. We have max heals, we're going to have max HP, and we're one away from max damage. We don't have all the reload buffs, so fair enough. So f fair enough, you know, not too big a, not too big a deal. Oh, oh. Alright, two not great games. Harukumo is a decent ship though, guys. Trust me, it's a good ship. You're just seeing World of Warships 2022 edition, all right? That's what you're seeing here, okay? Not a huge fan of it, but that's what we're getting. Um, let me know in the comments how you enjoy your Harigamo. Personally, it is the designated research point grinder for me. Like this, right? You know what? Here you go. This is what you do. I'll sh Quick little tutorial, research bureau points, okay? Wait for a 2x reset. Take your reset. Continue. See, we're going to gain some credits because we're just going to sell these ships. But the important thing is when we go back and play these ships, you can see from tier 5 to tier 10, we're gaining those research points. And it's a 2x because every couple of months they give you a double bonus. Reset. brugamo has gone. And then because we have 803,000 free XP, we can just go up here and we just go research purchase. We do research, not purchase. And then we do go here. Research, research, not purchase. And just keep doing it. And that's it. So once we've done this, 
you have two options, okay? You can go through and play each ship and you'll gain whatever it says here, right? We'll get, if we just play a Minikaze game, you can do this in co-op games. All you have to do is win any type of battle or earn 300 base XP. So you can do anything basically and you'll gain those research points. But what you could do is you could research your way through, not play any of them, and then once you've researched all the way up to the tier 10 again, you can reset again. And those points will be saved over from your previous reset. So the next time you would go through, you would then see on a Minikaze, instead of 200 points, it'd be 400 points and so on up the tree. And you can do this as many times as you want. So I've seen people that have saved up their research points on a lot on one of these lines where they've been getting like 60,000 out of a single Harugamo. <laughs> and that doesn't count the rest. So you can really, really save these up. And so that's why I'm interested in this line, not to really play it, but because it's the cheapest one to do this free XP thing for. Without Commander, purchase the ship back, and there we go. We've got a Harugamo again, just like that. And as we would purchase all of these ships back and play one single co-op game, we'd get ourselves around 20,000 research points. And if you're wondering, how do I get research points? I haven't seen this before. You need three or five tier 10s before the research bureau even unlocks. Sometimes you can get it early through missions, but if we go up here just really quick, um, And this is what you'll see once you unlock it. You see a bunch of ships here. I have 56,000 right now, so I need to play a couple of those ships and then I could play unlock and play the Gibraltar, Druid, Vampire, Apollo, Emilio, right? You can see I've already purchased a few of them. If you're wondering, Ohio's really the only one worth getting out of here. Slava is too situational and the alpha damage is so, so low that you basically need two Citadels for every single Citadel out of these other battleships at tier I don't like Slava, all right? You can go watch those videos, you'll know. Colbert, not a fan of. Siegfried, definitely not a fan of. Don't get Siegfried. Out of the other ones, I think Vampire 2 is pretty awesome, and I'd like to get it eventually. It's a hide-up daring combination, which is cool. Druid has some pretty nasty AP on its guns and a lot of HP and a crazy heal. And Paulo Emilio, well, it's the Yolo Emilio. You'll know if you want to play this thing or not based on one single clip online. Um, but the, that's the research bro, and that's how you do it. It's it's really quite easy. There's the legendary upgrades in here. Some of them are worth it, some of them are not. I'll probably make a video on that at some point as well. Probably not worth getting flags out of here, unless you have a ton of research points sitting around that you're not going to use. But that's the Harugamo. Honestly, this ship is pretty good, but that's what I use it for. It is my research points grinder. So let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.